For those who don't know what an NFT is, a non-fungible token. I'm 19 keys. NFT keys. Tap in. And it's a way essentially to um, create unique digital assets that aren't inexchangeable for other things and that can be verified and validated. It's like Bitcoin was like the first real digital ownership and it's the same thing essentially with other digital assets but they can also go to physical assets as well such as real estate or songs, right? Um, so directly answer your question, there's multiple platforms that you can use. Mm -hmm. Nifty Gateway, Rarible, OpenSea, you understand me? And a lot of them are fairly easy. You just go there and you utilize whatever form that they require you to upload the file as. And then some of them have to where you can set um, <clears throat> the percentage that you want on your secondary sales, meaning that when somebody else sell it, you get a commission off of it. So you can set it 10%, 20%, 50%. Some of the sites only allow like big name influencers or celebrities so that it's not an overcrowded market to where you don't know what you're buying, right? Um, but you can go on, yeah, I think Rarible is, is pretty easy. You go on Rarible, you upload it, you can attach a MP3 to it or a link to a, 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 a WeChat or whatever you want to. It could be a digital or physical item that they get. Once they buy it, they can unlock something else as well. You understand me? And so as soon as they buy it, it goes to their wallet. So now they have ownership of it the same way cryptocurrency will go to your wallet and you have ownership over that. You understand me? And then, yeah, that creates the ripple effect of it being on the blockchain. You understand me? So I hope that answers your question. Um, I'm question. Yes, sir. Yeah, Talk to him. Like yes, sir. So it depends on the website or on the platform. That's why I've said that like, they may require you to upload it in a certain rendering, right? So you got to have something digital for it to be an NFT. Yeah, you can take yeah, a photo take a and upload it. My bro Jim Jones took a photo of his jury and then sold it for Ethereum. You understand me? Oh. So you can take a photo of whatever people think is valuable, but at the same time, you got to create the value. So if I'm a tattoo artist, you understand me? Let's say that the way you're selling tattoo sessions is that you're selling the actual art and then if they buy that, they unlock a tattoo session. Maybe that can represent an hour session. You understand me? So they can buy that and then they can always own it and then they can cash it in as an appointment for later on in time. Right. Let's say that you offer NFT tattoos where you uh, you create a print of a tattoo that somebody gets on them, but you also send them a framed artwork of that same tattoo that you created for them. Or you've created a digital component to their physical tattoo and it might exist in a 3D realm. I'm going to throw this one at you too. This is a this is a key. Okay, go ahead and give us a million dollar worth of guy. Tattoo mm -hmm. trading cards. Mm. Yeah, he I'm got it. That one. Uh, you got it. You now what you, got, what you going to do with it now? <laughs> you, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I always say. The technology is the technology. It's how creative you get with using it. Right? So like the most dangerous thing is for you to look at the market and say, okay, that's how I'm going to use it. You understand me? Because you just following somebody else's template on how they seen the technology and the use cases for it. Right. Right? The mass adoptive. It took blockchain so long to become adopted because there's creative use cases. So NFTs is probably the best use case thus far for the blockchain on a mass level because it's a way for everybody to use it. Right. How many people got a product in here that they sell? Everybody that has a product already created something of value that people want. So if you create a digital version of that product, then you already have something that you can sell as an NFT because you already have a market. You understand right. me? If I create a digital version of this crown, then I say, well, the only way to buy this, you have to buy the digital version. Not only is it a clever way for me to be able to get uh, cryptocurrency in exchange for my products as well. I think it was Slice that said it. He said he never bought any cryptocurrency. He said, when's the last time you bought a dollar? Right? right? So you want to think about earning cryptocurrency. Earn yes. And I thought that that was a very clever way to actually spend that so people can understand the yeah. concept that this is a form of value that you earn in exchange for value. Yeah. Right, you dictate your value. That's what the bidding and auction uh, business model in the NFTs is similar to eBay auction model. So you are, develop you are creating your own value and your own worth. And if somebody matches that, then if you get a sale or if you get a, a um, someone who bids on your product and they make you an offer that matches what you said your value is, then by doing that, they solidified your value. Beeple, 
who sold the art piece for 69 million it was purchased by somebody who already knew him right so his his people who collected they already had the disposable income because like i was saying earlier for holders of ethereum the whales and the people that are very aggressive in that in the nft market tend to be people who bought ethereum at a dollar five dollars and twenty dollars and it was a it's an asset that increased in value so now this asset has increased to five thousand dollars so imagine if you own two thousand or two million of them right but you came in early so theoretically what it's showing you is this market is about being an early adapter the early adapters are the winners the early adapters are the ones who are able to benefit mostly off of these markets they set the precedent they set the precedence so you want to be very early to certain ideas and concepts and um you know you'll benefit off of that in the long run this is a long whole game there's two types of people there's investors and there's traders right you could do day trading of coins and nfts on a daily basis but you could be an investor who's holding for the long run and say i'm this is a 10-year investment mm -hmm. i'm sacrificing everything right now i'm selling everything i'm going what you would know as nigga broke because there's all a nigga in. rich but you know i thought you were gonna say all in but i'm all in <laughs> because what i'm hedging is that in five years this will all pay off right a lot of people are divesting themselves of physical what you know is trinkets and things in the physical realm in order to invest in the digital world or the metaverse and things of that nature with the quote unquote you know the risk is i'm going to re there's going to be a reward in a few years from this so even when it comes to the nft market the opportunity is still available because you are in the beginning of it you are in the throes of it Absolutely. even if you think crypto kitties and other nfts are a lot of money imagine what they're going to be in 10 years so the fact just that, now i was i was mm -hmm. gonna buy one of them crypto punks when it was at twenty thousand, but i didn't have the uh cryptocurrency in one of my wallets at the time to exchange right. for it then when i went back when i was ready to buy it it was at seventy thousand. the 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 lowest the, the highest lowest, was right. around like two three million dollars and then the somebody just difference. it's like a 30 days right you understand me because number one i know that that project is going to continue to just grow up in value Right. Especially the more people make money in cryptocurrencies, people making hundreds of millions and billions. Right. You understand me? A Satoshi's. We talking. To, we got to talk Satoshi's here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? We ain't right. talking dollars no more. <laughs> you got to switch it over. Speaking of Satoshi's, I seen they got the the set project that they want to unveil so that people can buy into Satoshi's rather than looking at it as a Bitcoin. Because right. most people don't believe, they think that Bitcoin price is too high. Too high. Because number one, you're not looking at it from a percentage standpoint. You're looking at it from a dollar. USD, and that's why you're losing. USD value. So if you look at it from a percentage, then you're looking at it wherever I put in. That's the percentage that I'm getting back once it goes up. Right. You understand me? Then it changes the way you start to function. And that's just the basis of investing, period. Like you always want a percentage return, right? And what Red said was key. When it comes to long-term investing, I have two different strategies that I go in there. I'm going for a price or I'm going for a time period. You understand me? If I say, well, let me check this out for the next three months and see what this will be. Right. If it don't make it to my three months, then I might pull out and go into another investment. Or I say, if it goes to this price, then this is the target that I want. And then once it go there, I might pull out my investment then. Right. You understand you me? Take yourself. Absolutely. So therefore, as the market is what they call going on the uptrend, you're not just riding a wave up and all the way down. And you missed out on all of it. You understand me? And you left there holding the bag, waiting for it to come back up to an all-time high, yeah. and it may never get there again. Right, right. It's, I, I think that was a, it was a great question to, to ask. You know, the process about creating NFT, and that's a, that's a question that, that is a, a big part of the today's trendy conversation. Right, as you can see, like with the answers, the conversation went more towards being creative and how you approach it, and be creative in how you market it right because when we talk about artists when we ever you know artists are, are excited about nfts but what's the difference if we have artists now whether you're a painter you uh you you draw you cut hair whatever the case may be you artists you have music we have a ton of people that that have great product but nobody knows about it they still aren't able to sell it. just because you yeah, record a song record, record a song put it on itunes doesn't mean it's gonna get streams gonna be able to earn from it right so we have to understand that as far as the process of creating an nft is super simple right as far as cost super efficient as far as depending on what the gas fee are on the on the blockchain 
that you're utilizing. Mental. But understand how are you gonna bring a conversation to surround that art where people want it, where people need it. What uses, uh, how creative are you gonna be in your use of how you can utilize that NFT for people to want to share, to need to share. Right. Keys mentioned, and you hear a lot of people talk about that secondary market, right? So the, the giving the people that actually purchase your NFT uh, uh, the ability to resell and the want to resell, and it has built-in value that increases. And, and so when they resell it, you have your royalties in place that you're able to earn. That secondary market is gonna make, if you're, if you're looking to sell, that secondary market is a lot bigger for you as far as monetizing it than that in, than that that initial, first initial market right the importance in a primary and a secondary market would be community correct right? absolutely because we're absolutely. saying that we can create all of these amazing things right but if you don't have a backboard to bounce it off of you feel me it's like what's the analogy they say if if, if the tree wasn't with that it analogy the forest, yeah nobody but nobody's it. seen it did it fall so it's like you making amazing paradigm shifting things but if, if there's nobody that, there to consume it you know what I'm saying to make the purchase to start the particular transaction and then start building the value you know how can they emerge to be a secondary yeah. market nobody that's, that's knows qualify that value not to cut your wisdom but nobody knows the greatest artists in the world they know the most popular artists in the world mm -hmm. right you understand me so it doesn't matter how good you are if nobody knows about it and so the community aspect is talking about data as well you understand me? Because without data, you can't compete in the future, right? If you don't have a community, you no longer have a brand in the future. You know, you don't have nobody to market to. Everybody's going to be a part of a community, and they're going to get everything inside that community. Mm -hmm. You understand me? It's the same way if you look at the Chinese community, that's going to be what happens in the digital world, where they're just circulating and buying everything in that ecosystem. Right. So I just had this thought process yesterday is, even when it comes to any link that I send, I don't ever want to send out a YouTube link again. I want to send out a WhatsApp link or I want to send out or a Discord link and say that the link is inside this. Mm -hmm. So I'm always pulling someone in the community. Mm -hmm. right. So now that they are going back to that community to have discussions around the content, right? So you're building out. That's the secondary aspect of even content, right? What happens after a person watch? Now you create the community so that they can talk about it with the people that you created it with, right? right? And so I'm looking at myself as... Um, an influential person right now, right? right? And my brother's right here, Red Pill, Blue Pill, Pop Darby, Iggy. And we think about this aspect that anything that we create, we have to think about ourselves in the 50 years, 100 years in the future, right? That you all gonna be like, man, I remember when they first had a discussion about that and now it's memorabilia, you understand me? That, yeah, I wanna buy one of their first NFTs that was out because it means something to you, right? right? So now it has value to you and everybody that was ever touched by those influencers or celebrities or people that's a part of that community. So you might not even realize that some of these projects are valuable, but just think about what's valuable to you now and right. what's valuable to this generation and over time, how that's going to go up in value. So what, what NFT is uh, primarily doing is, is returning value to people who are undervalued mm -hmm. underappreciated right uh as as creators and things of that nature we were not appreciated for our content as artists we were starving artists we were not appreciated for our content if you find a community that can now appreciate what it is that you're doing is going to feed your passion right you're able to live now off of your passion and off of your creativity, creator economy. You don't need the quote unquote third party, which is considered to be a nine to five or a boss or somebody who can potentially own you through contract, right? You could free yourself through smart contract because keep in mind when we look into the entertainment industry, one of the biggest obstacles for them to even obtain wealth is contracts. There's a clause with industry artists to, with the NFTs to whereas the record label is pulling out uh, cease and desist and whatnot because they're saying no, you can't mint an NFT with your image and whatnot because we own that. Right. Right? Your intellectual property theoretically based off of your 360 deal is ours. So as a rap artist, you can't be running around with the people that are unsigned making NFTs. So now we currently live in an environment to whereas the unsigned artist has more opportunity to sell their first album as a, at a million dollars, right? Without any type of label and without any middlemen and whatnot and without being owned via contract, via smart contract. Until they realize that even in that market, the, the beauty of the blockchain is that it creates way more rights than what was there right, lawfully, mm -hmm. right? 
So let's say that you have another artist make that for you and then you buy it, right? right? And then as a secondary seller, you can do whatever you want to. That has nothing to do with your contract, right? right? So it's the loophole effect that it creates and it gives and restores the rights to the people. Yeah, and that's why they don't like it because it ain't centralized. It don't go back to a central authority. Right. You understand they don't have me? Hand in that pocket. And, and, and another thing is like, I love the NFT conversation because it's the same. NFTs in like it's, it's like cryptocurrency, right? Let's say if you take an NFT and you say, listen, as long as you own this, or you, it can be like a loan essentially. Right. That a person will. Uh, buy something for a hundred thousand dollars, right? And it can almost be like staking and, and, and the staking is basically like, you know, owning something and getting a reward for it, like interest points, right? So let's say I'll be like, all right, if you own this and you don't sell it uh, for the next three months, you can sell it back to me, right? And right. then I'll, I'll pay interest, interest on top of it. Right. But in the meantime, I'm gonna flip the money that you gave me, right? right? So it could be a means of loaning money that has nothing to do with the banking system that's not taxed the same way. Right. You understand me? Because you blind it back from them, right? So it's like all of these different ways that it allow you to think creative when it comes to the monetary system, when it comes to banking, right? Because all of this is created off the monetary system and human behavior. Right. If you can understand the monetary system and human behavior, the psychology, you understand me? Then everything comes into fold. But the reason decentralized currency and, and the whole system don't make sense because we don't understand centralized currency <laughs> in the system. Right. So it's like if you don't understand liquidity injections and, and you know the yield curve and all of these different things that they put into to run the economy, how the loan works and, 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 and life insurance, then you won't understand any of those things. We don't understand agriculture, so yielding and yield farming and all these terms, none of it makes sense to us. So all of it is just collectively looking at our ignorance that made us impoverished in the first place and saying that, oh, if I educate myself on all the areas that brought us to poverty, then we can become wealthy, right? right? Because we can understand these industries. So now we're getting exposed to all our ignorance to be like, damn, I don't understand none of this. And all of it was the stuff that you were supposed to learn in school. You understand me? But it was meant to make you a worker and not someone who has a skill-based income. Right. You understand me? I was talking to a young child, and I'm gonna tell this story for a very long time consistently, because he was right, eight years old. He said, Keys, if I broke my leg today, you know I'm just gonna start trading stocks. I said, God damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he was basically saying, I'm not worried about it, you understand me? If I can't play football and sports, I'm just gonna trade stocks. Yeah. This generation ain't worried about working for somebody else. Yeah. They worried about the skills that they can utilize to earn an income. You understand me? And they looking at cryptocurrency because if at first they tell you, you know, the average graduate makes more than a person who didn't graduate and all of this other stuff and average person become a millionaire in their 40s. Now the children are like, man, that could happen overnight if I learn the right thing and make the right play. So the mindset that they looking at is through for finding access. And access is the smart way to get things done. You understand me? And so as long as you all that of this generation, Gen Z, Millennials, Baby Boomers, you know what I'm saying, Gen X, I don't know your age, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna put you out like that, you know what I'm saying? But everybody now has to learn the same information. I hear mothers and fathers and uncles and people say, I'm doing this for my children, or I want my children to be in it. No, you need to get in it. They don't know it because you don't know it. Mm -hmm. If you knew it, then you'll be able to teach them. So the same exact education they need is the same exact education you need. You understand me? And y'all need to be able to have a discourse in it in your household, right? Because when they look at NFTs, they should be able to come with you with a million creative mm -hmm. ideas and you should be able to help fund it and get it done and understand it as well so you can fire your job. I'm 19 Keys. NFT Keys. Tap in.